Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Rasha from Peridot Makeup, hairstylist and makeup artist. Instagram has given us many inspirations relative to makeup and all aspects of life really. And it's also given us many trends and beauty hacks. Stay tuned to see which hacks and trends actually work in the real life and which ones only work behind the lens. Before we start, I'd like to ask if you could please subscribe to my channel and like this video if you found it useful and don't forget to share the love. Well, these days setting powder is used in different ways and sometimes not used at all because we want to achieve that glow. So the, so the theory is that you only apply setting powder where you want to stay matte, so often just in the T-zone and you forget about the cheeks. Now let me tell you a true story. A few days ago I was watching Netflix and I came across um, this comedian who I, I absolutely adore, but she was giving a live performance. And into her performance, maybe 10-15 minutes, um, her makeup literally started to fade off her cheeks. So the only makeup that stayed, and you could tell the color foundation because she had quite pink lip, um, cheeks, the only makeup that stayed was actually literally on her T-zone and her eyes. Okay, So her cheeks were completely revealed, all the makeup has run out. Why is that? Because I'm guessing the makeup artist refused or didn't or forgot, whatever, to put setting powder on her cheeks. Maybe. So you see now why it's so important to put setting powder all over your face, not just in the T-zone and the eyelids, yeah? The other thing I'd like to talk about relative to setting powder is the baking. Baking is basically when you pile on lots and lots and lots of setting powder underneath your eyes once you've put your foundation on. In order to um, make sure that the concealer and the highlighter from contouring and highlighting doesn't budge. Now let me tell you why that's wrong. Firstly piling on tons and tons and tons of setting powder is going to dry out your skin. Now the skin underneath our eyes is quite delicate. Firstly as you know it's quite thin so it's thinner than our skin on the cheeks but it also tends to get more dry so when the makeup when you when you pile it up with setting powder and then leave it on for 10-15 minutes and then remove it you can imagine how dry this area will be um, even if you brush it off in the end you know you might think oh I've gotten rid of all of it but come back to it a couple of hours later then you'll see that every fine line every expression line that you have underneath your eyes will be magnified now, as you all know, in my previous short videos, I've often said that contouring is not actually a new trend that was invented by Instagram or Kim Kardashian or Mario Ho makeup artists. It's been around for decades. It's been around. Blend the contouring really well. You're not meant to see a sharp line of where the um, um, contouring began and underneath it. So there's really, really, really no point whatsoever in applying highlighter just straight underneath where the contour is. You're not meant to see these sharp lines, okay? You're meant to create a shadow which basically gives you either an uplifted cheekbone or... Really. The other thing is you see often in ads as well, there's, they've applied um, contouring in a line so it's generally a brown shade uh, anyway let's go for a brown and then pink another line and on top the golden or creamy color which is the highlight or the illusion firstly now the first thing I'm going to say is blusher is not meant to be a line and secondly the highlighter or the illuminator is not meant to be a straight line either or a diagonal line whatever you want to call it okay so and then so let's go for contouring first contour first blend it out really well and then apply the um, blusher and that's generally down here no one blushes on their temple i don't know if you've ever seen anyone blush up there but it doesn't really naturally happen so keep your blusher on the apples of your cheeks which are these parts okay Please don't take them up all the way to the eyes. I've seen that so many times. I see it with makeup artists with a huge following, both on YouTube and Instagram. So it's honestly really, really not attractive. And at the same time, don't bring it all the way to your nose. Okay, so if you bring it down to your nose, and some even go as far as to put it on their 
um, forehead, you look sunburnt. And last, last time I checked, a sunburnt look is not a good look. The contouring of the nose, or contour in general really, is only meant to be applied if and where it's required to enhance your beauty or to slightly amend something to give you the illusion of, of something existing that naturally does not exist. That is the purpose of contouring. But if you already have beautiful high cheekbones, if you already have a beautifully shaped nose, then you really don't need to apply that. Please remember that everything you see in this video is my personal opinion and based on my personal experience. So please don't take any offense. At the end of the day, makeup is makeup. Makeup is fun. Makeup is meant to make you feel good. I mean, it's meant to give you a fun time, really a good time applying it. So go ahead and play with, with makeup. But these points are merely to help you if you are a bit confused with so many opinions that you see out there, so many trends and looks. Okay, sticking to the glow, what we see nowadays is oil being applied directly onto the skin in order to get that glowy effect. Oils, they're great for your skin, don't get me wrong, I love them. I, but here's the thing, right? Oil and makeup don't go very well together. A lot of foundations are either water-based, wax-based, or silicon-based. In all three cases, the foundation will, will either split or thin out. Oil is one of these products that need to be warmed up first. If you do want to use a face oil, the best thing you do is to use a couple of drops on your fingertips and then warm it up so it becomes similar temperature as your skin and then apply it on your face, neck and decolletage and make sure you press it in into your skin so that the skin absorbs it. If you want to do that before you apply foundation, by all means you can, but please allow some time for the oil to be absorbed by the skin. And if there's still some residue, make sure you pat dry it with either tissue, beauty blender, powder puff, anything. Now the other issue I have with that one, this is that, is that the amount of oil that they use. When you squirt in two big drops on either cheek and then on your forehead, on your nose, all of that, imagine how much oil there's going to be. So what you end up doing is firstly you're wasting the product because you really don't need that much product, especially not when it's cold on your skin. And the second thing is imagine the amount of product as in foundation and concealer, anything else are going to use over the top of it because it's going to be so slippery. That's just, that's just a real life thing, okay? It's either going to be really slippery, it's going to leave streaks and it will thin out the foundation. Similar to the saga with the face oils, we have the illuminator being applied directly on all over the face. Illuminator is only meant to highlight some parts of the face, not the entire face. The last thing I'd like to talk about today is when you apply lipstick and then you press your lips together. In reality, it doesn't really do anything. So regardless what type of lipstick you're using, what's it meant to do? If it's meant to blend out the lipstick, just use your ring finger, trust me, it's more effective. Okay, just, just gently dab on your lips to make sure that it doesn't crease in any parts. The other reason I don't like doing that is because our upper lips shape is very different to our lower lips shape so then they don't mirror each other so there's every chance and i've seen that so many times it's not funny of you smudging your lipstick and having it go extend to the cupid's bone that part here my advice is to outline your lips first put the lipstick on and then with a tissue just gently press against the tissue and not against your lip tips I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I will be making more of these episodes in the near future because there's just simply so many trends that I see on a daily basis that I just shake my head over. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. I'm Resha from Peridot Makeup. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share the love. Love you.